Hello everyone, this is the joy of reading. In this video I will talk about some Italian 20th century must-read books. These are not necessarily my own favorite Italian 20th century books, but the ones I find most influential on a cultural or historical point of view. I will be talking about novels only. The books are also not presented in any particular order, chronological or whatsoever. Today I would like to present four of them. All of the titles and authors are listed in the box below. The first book is Il Gatto Pardo or The Leopard by Giuseppe Tomasi di Lampedusa, a book published in 1958. This book is set in Sicily during the so-called resurgence, so the period of time around 1860 when Italy became united. Before the Italian unification, Sicily belonged to the so-called reign of the two Sicilies, so a reign which included the southern part of Italy, and in the reign of the two Sicilies the middle class was not as important as in other parts of the country or in other European countries of the same era. So nobility was extremely powerful. The reign of the two Sicilies was eventually annexed to Italy after the so-called Expedition of the Thousand, guided by the patriot Giuseppe Garibaldi, who conquered the southern part of Italy in 1860. The book's protagonist is an old nobleman, the Prince of Salina, and he, just like the other aristocrats, is not happy with the new situation and with the rise of middle class and gentry. His beloved nephew Tancredi, on the contrary, takes part to the expedition of Thousand and then serves in the Italian army. So he embraces this change and he accepts the new situation. But this is not because Tancredi believes in the Italian unification and because he believes in Garibaldi's project, but because of an utter political calculation. Tancredi explains his point of view to the Prince of Salina with words which have become legendary and very often used to command politics in Italy. Tancredi says, if we are not there, if we don't take part to this change, those people are going to make a republic. If we want everything to stay as it was before, then everything has to change. So the Prince of Salina decides to green and bear it, and when people question him and ask him whether it's good to accept the Italian unification and the new Italian government, he says yes, and eventually he is offered a chair as a senator, but he refuses it. This book really says a lot about especially politicians who tend to adapt to new circumstances and to reposition themselves very quickly and always in the most uh, useful way for them. The second book is called Il Barone Rampante or The Baron in the Trees and was written by Italo Calvino in 1957. The book is set in Liguria, in the northern part of Italy, between 1767 and 1820. And the protagonist is also a nobleman, the Baron Cosimo. In 1767, 12 years old Cosimo has a quarrel with his father. He climbs on a tree in the garden and he says, I won't come down anymore. And he keeps his word. So he spends the rest of his life on the trees. The narrator, his younger brother, explains that the region was plenty of large woods at the time, so it was possible for Cosimo to move and to travel while still living on the trees. While on the trees he has any possible kind of adventure. He has romantic adventures, he makes friends with bandits, he meets Napoleon, he meets Voltaire by exchanging letters with him, and when he feels death approaching, he decides to end his life in a very particular way, which I won't reveal, of course. This is a philosophical fiction, and it belongs to a trilogy whose other two books 
are also philosophical fictions. So if you enjoyed, for example, Voltaire's Candide, uh, you're probably going to like this as well. The third book is Canne al vento, or Reeds in the Wind, written in 1913 by Grazia de Ledda, who later won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1926. The book is set in a small village in Sardinia. There are three sisters who are aging and living in relative poverty. They have a small farm and they are assisted by a servant called Ephesio. Later we find out that there was a fourth sister called Lia who had decided to leave Sardinia for continental Italy where she had married, creating quite an impression in her village and dismay uh, in her father. After Leah's flight, the women's father was found dead in mysterious circumstances, which will be explained during the novel. First of all, the book portrays Sardinia, a region which is, of course, separated from the rest of Italy, being an island, and which was, at the beginning of the 20th century, quite rural so it's interesting to see how the social and economical changes um, could influence a region with a peculiar history and traditions like Sardinia. And then the fourth book, which is probably more famous um, outside of Italy than the other three. And it is Il nome della rosa, or The Name of the Rose, written in 1980 by Umberto Eco. This book is sort of an historical detective story. The book is set in a Benedictine monastery in northern Italy in 1327. It is a large monastery with lots of monks, a large library, and it is used during the book as a common ground and neutral ground in a dispute between the Franciscan friars and the Pope. At the beginning of the novel, an old Franciscan friar called William of Baskerville and a young Benedictine novice called Azzo arrive at the monastery to take part to this dispute. But in the following days, several monks are found murdered in the monastery. And William of Baskerville starts to investigate. Of course, the name William of Baskerville is a homage to Conan Doyle's The Hound of the Baskervilles, and William of Baskerville looks and sounds a little like Sherlock Holmes. So if you like Sherlock Holmes, you are probably going to enjoy this novel as well. The author, Umberto Eco, was an extremely cultivated university professor. And the way he portrays the monastery, the Middle Ages, and the religious disputations of the time are realistic and precise. So this book manages to be a um, fun and adventurous detective story, but at the same time very informative about medieval history and theology. So that's all for today. In my next video I will keep reading, translating and commenting the third canto of Dante's Inferno, but I am definitely going to do a second episode of this must-read 20th century Italian novels video. Thank you for listening. If you are interested in my videos, please remember to subscribe to my channel and you also find me on Facebook with the same name and the same logo. Have a nice day!